All right now, what's good, everybody? I'm Sabre, a.k.a. Sweet Baby Bray, a.k.a. Make a Nigga Pay, Today. a.k.a. Never Too Late to the Bag. Yada. I'm Sean. And this is No, no Disclaimers, Disclaimers Podcast. Podcast, the best show in the DMV, ladies and gentlemen. We here. We here. How y'all feeling? Y'all feeling good? Y'all feeling great? No, we're sick. That's why we're drinking fucking tea. <laughs> I'm always feeling know. good when I'm here with you two ladies. I'm feeling fantastic. Dropped a vicious whale off just now. <laughs> I'm feeling fantastic, y'all. I'm, I'm feeling real good. I'm glad you still I say well. I see you got the cutty last night. So I, <laughs> I swear to God. Listen. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't get nothing. Sabre, this tea is amazing. Understand. Thank you. I make the best tea. You know what I'm saying? I make the best vegan meals. You know, I'm Correct. getting ready. For something, and so yeah, I have to hone my skills. You ready for what? I don't know. What, a fucking vegan the chili cook-off. <laughs> <laughs> how she gonna let? How she gonna let the people know I'm getting ready for something? Right. Okay, this, what is I'm that? Something? Of the bok choy. No, I'm just, like, no, I'm, just like. I'm just getting ready to improve in life. Like anything I do, I want to be great at it. So if, even if it's making tea, I want to make the best tea. You feel me? All right, I'm with you. I'm broccoli with you. battle. Like, <laughs> broccoli battle. So no, you make, but yeah. you make good Brussels sprouts. I do. You do. Yeah. Do you make them crispy like they do at Granite? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I bake them. Yeah, till they get a little crispy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A little African American on the side. Shout out to myself. You wrapping in bacon. Shout out to all the vegans out there. I, I put a bacon show. crumble. You're on not a jokes. vegan though. I know, but I, I fuck with the vegans, huh? Gotcha. I, yeah, you, you're alone on that precipice because fuck them. All right, I, but I hate vegans. How was y'all? Speaking of food, how was y'all Thanksgiving? <sighs> it was exhausting. That was last week. I cook, so you cook. Oh, I ain't cook shit. Yeah. I, I, What's your I specialty? Mac and cheese. Shout out to everyone who's had my mac. Yeah, y'all know what it's hitting on. Okay. I'm trying to cut out cheese. I want to limit cheese. I just want people to start calling a family dinner day. You know, I, we've been saying that. Y'all can go back on our other episodes. Let's call a family dinner day. It ain't that, that deep. Shit. Right, it's right. not that deep. It's a, so don't, let's not, let's just call a family dinner day because that's all we fucking do. Right. Well, why we got to like change it like midlife? It's, it's, I mean, it's been hey. Thanksgiving for all my life. I don't hey. feel like changing the name. I don't know. Just because I feel like I don't know. I don't fucking know. That's I know no dumb as shit. Family dinner day. That sounds dumb as shit. So does Thanksgiving okay. tree okay. gift day? Like the fuck? Like <laughs> yeah. All that's not call it Christmas anymore. Man, we can't give thanks. Family gift day. We can't yeah. give thanks. Gotcha. I mean, you can. You just give thanks. Let's change day. the name of all the holidays. Right. We should all them white ass holidays. Right. Yeah. Mother's Day. What's that? Bitch, you had a baby day. Gotcha. <laughs> Bitches give birth every day. 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 <laughs> <laughs> But no, um, I'm Man. glad I had a good, you know, I enjoyed my family as well. Uh, you, shout out to all the people who are too woke to, to spend time with their family. What you was about to say? We see how Sabre, Sabre don't care. It's just a filler question. It's not. I mean? didn't even tell you how my things even was. <laughs> <laughs> y'all done told me. It's all right. I don't care. All right. How was it? How was it? How was it? You, you tweeted. She always your, does that. How was your Thanksgiving thing? Tell us all about it. Tell us, please. I care. It was okay. I care. <laughs> You did like, all that to say that? No, because it's not the same. You don't care. I don't know why you <laughs> ask the questions. You do that every show. Shut <laughs> <laughs> up like shit. Yeah. What can I say? Just um, like when a nigga asks his girl how her, her day was. I'm not let really me fucking asked. tell you. Wow, that's oh, crazy. Damn. Damn. Yeah, Bitch, I didn't really want yeah. to know. I just had to Y'all ask really you that. Don't be wanting to know hey, about our day. I feel no. like I feel what? like niggas be wanting to really know how my day was because my days be interesting as fuck. And I, I have to get the gap, and I, I tell a, stories very well. I don't give a fuck how your day dogs. was, I, honestly. <laughs> but it's something that has to be asked. I, do, I'm trying. Women to are long winded. Are these yeah. dollars to take? Not me. Not? Huh? <laughs> not, You're not, not that long winded. Not when it comes to my day. I feel like it was productive. It was good. I, I got this done and I got that done. Okay, got you. But also, I'm not your days. man. If you had a man, you would be. You would elaborate more. Am I correct? If he acts, I don't even he wait like, for him to he'll ask. He'll come in the house like, "How's your day?" Oh, nah, I, I don't I, even. I fucked up this nigga fade. I'm oh, okay then. Right, I don't even wait for wild. a nigga to ask. I'm just about to tell you, period. Oh, my yeah. God. They fucking blowing me right now. What's yeah, that's wrong, why I don't, no, what, Niggas don't really care. Okay. okay. Well, that's good to know. So, when a nigga asked me how my day was, I'm like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. It was all right. And then just keep it hey, moving? Yes. That's what it is. I'm going to try that. <laughs> Watch. They're going to be, they love sweet babies. So, they're going to be like, no. He might give you a ring. All right. So, what I got to say again? Should I marry this bitch? <laughs> she don't be talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but anyway, so I'm glad you had an all right Thanksgiving. Did you explain? Did you go into in depth? No, it's honestly. Um, what you make? It was good. Me and all my cousins, we went to my grandma's house. Everybody kind of had Thanksgiving like separately, and then mm-hmm. we all we was like, hey, we gotta go to grandma's house, and we all did. So that was dope. So do y'all bring? So do, okay, so. This is my first Thanksgiving single, right? Gotcha. Because <laughs> oh everybody God. knows. Oh, you know, speaking of that. You were dating when you were seven? Shut the fuck up. You know what I'm talking about. In six years, gotcha. of a, in the past six or seven years or whatever. Gotcha. This is my first uh, single Thanksgiving. And it wasn't that bad. As far as like family asking and stuff, it wasn't bad at all. Mm-hmm. Y'all families really do that? My family do. They be like, so how's dating? I don't, and I'm just I've like, never been asked that before in my uh, life. Uh, I think that's unfair. I think, I think that's done to like women like Nobody asked the men in my family or the, like... Well, when you've been bringing someone with mm, you for years... Consistently. Consistently. They're going to... And they're no longer there and they know why because y'all broke up. Yeah. They're going to be like... They're going to be my, be my gotcha. ex. And it's okay for them to ex as long as they don't just do to the most. But yeah, it's just like, it's, it's cool. Gotcha. That's it. Yeah. No one has ever asked me that ever. Gotcha. Why? I don't know. Maybe I have mind your fucking business bitch vibe. I don't know. But no one's ever yeah. asked me that. See, this is what I don't get. Like, I've been saying this... What's wrong with family asking questions? It's nothing wrong with it to me. I mean, I mean but you won't get the answer that I give you, and you won't. I mean, and that's cool too. That. But like people, are like, so what the fuck are we supposed to be talking about yeah. at Thanksgiving? Like, that's what people do. They haven't seen you. They want to know what's going on. Yeah. They're going to ask you typical questions. Talk about all that other shit, but don't talk about if I got an egg or not. It's not your fucking business. I can see that, but it's like. I feel like everybody has a rebuttal of what could be offensive. Like, hey, how's the job going? Don't ask me how to. That's none of your business. Well, I don't. Well, I don't know. Maybe because I don't have like my Thanksgivings are typically like very close knit. Like it's not like these distant relatives that I haven't talked to. Yeah. Like, so you don't got to like, worry about that, then. It's me, yeah. my mom, my siblings, mm-hmm. nieces and nephews. That's a, yeah. that type of shit. So. Well, yeah, I see my family a, a couple of times a year because we're also. Well, I know I'm busy, so mm-hmm. I don't know if they're that busy, but I don't see them. But family the reunion and Thanksgiving and that's it. You have a family so, reunion? Yeah, in the summer. Wow. She's from, so, she's from South Carolina. You know. I got family That's all the family. Carolina. I'm getting odd, nigga. And so I, I'm getting for sure, but I got folks from South Carolina. Shout yeah. out to them. I got she family got in Atlanta. Like 10 family reunions. I ain't been to a family reunion since like 94. <laughs> no, but, but I don't even they, think you were alive yet. But people, shut the fuck up. <sighs> These old ass niggas, I sort of got. But no, so yeah, it was cool. I mean, when they ask you, you just answer them. I answer them honestly. Like, the shit is going to live or whatever. Like, Yo, my cousin getting fat, I'm going to tell that nigga, dog, what the down. fuck you doing, dog? Yeah. So the fuck down. Yeah, now Maybe we got a you... Thanksgiving fight. Yeah. Tell me I'm getting I'm, fat. I'm, I'm squaring up. I'm the oldest cousin. <laughs> First of all, oh, I've been gosh. hosting it for years, so don't come into my Caucasian home and tell cousin. me that I'm getting fat. That's You're getting funny. the fuck out. There, there goes your plate. Well. Hope McDonald's is open. McDonald's. So shout out to everybody that's about to do the holiday single or whatever, because you got Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and um, that's the best holiday to be single. Christmas, Christmas, man, what? You don't gotta spend no fucking money you on nobody. Yeah, you know, that's just the money sweetest money. holiday. That's true. Well, that's I just true. got asked what I want for Christmas, so it's not the sweetest holiday gotcha. to be single. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody yeah. got asked what they want for Christmas. What did you say? <laughs> nothing. You said nothing. Mm-hmm. So what does that really mean, though? Nothing. Like, not a thing. I'm not asking for anything. So, if he doesn't get you anything, you're not going to be mad? No. What do you, okay. I'm pissed. Like, I'm shit. She's pissed. fucking lying. It, maybe if my birthday was in like June, I would be pissed, but my birthday just passed and I was yeah, very blessed. And I was very blessed, okay. so I'm not pressed. What you get for your birthday? Um, that's some stuff and some things. All right, she's not going to share. If you're not no. going to share, say you're not going to share. I got some flower. I got, I like, I got like two dozen pink roses. Can y'all spit it out for the, li- the listeners? Oh. Listen and right I now. might like, what the have fuck gotten, are you gotten about? Uh, you know, black uh, YSL. East St. Laurent bag, okay? Thank YSL you. Shout out to him. camera crossbody. Let's be specific. So you already knew. I mean, I wanted to her to tell her. I was story, saying was, it. I was, I was in the middle of the brand. You cut uh, me off. That's like, just like uh, women asking questions. They already know the answers to. Yes, that's what we do. That's yeah, our special thing. Black wide cell camera to cross him. body and a Shout trip to, to the him. spa. You know, I got a nice massage and yes. everybody treated me. They exfoliated me. It was very, very calming and beautiful. It was a beautiful birthday. Good, good. I celebrated with people. Someone didn't show up, but I mean, you know. I'm sorry. Life, life goes on. You know. I'm sorry. Friends, how many of us good, have? I ain't gonna lie, I'm not a good friend. I'm not. I haven't, oh, been, I haven't been a good friend mm-hmm. this year. I invited her to my birthday 
um, 64 months in advance, mm-hmm. and Talk she got invited to a Friendsgiving the day before and Talk was like, fuck your birthday, bitch. Not mm-hmm. the day, it was not the day before. The, first of all, listen, I'm not the best friend. I will tell I will tell all my friends that I'm not the best friend out here, but I'm going to get better in 2020. Just I'm just my not, little hobnob, and I know hobnob text you. I know hobnob text you. We got to get to the topic. Okay, so today... <laughs> <laughs> So today we're going to talk about, um, I wanted to get into breakups, and I know a lot of people are single for the holidays, single for the year, about to go into 2020, single, whatever, and there's some of y'all in relationships too, but we're not talking about y'all today. Um, How do you know when a relationship is over? Because people, you, you break up before the breakup. If that makes sense. I think and, men and women can agree to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I remember when I went through my breakup, people were t- like, I'm older people, younger people, like my age, they were like, oh my God, like, you're so brave. And I'm just like, how? Like, mm-hmm. I didn't understand. I was like, if you know, if you can see the end of the situation, why would you stay in that? If you're unhappy and it's been consistent for a certain amount of time, like, why would you just continue to like ride it out? How did that make me brave? But then, you know, I'm later on, like, you. huh? So that nigga gonna jump you. What you mean? <laughs> no, I mean that's any any, any I'm, I gotta speak. I you have to be vulnerable. You mm. know what I'm saying on these platforms or whatever. So, um, and this everything is all like, everything respectful mm. and all that. But yeah, so I want to know like for y'all y'all experiences because I know um, y'all have dealt with breakups. How do you know? And we'll start with y'all. That, how do you know when it's over? Like how what what are the signs? Like how do you know when a relationship is over? It's usually around the time I start fucking somebody. It's like no. <laughs> <laughs> definitely it's over. Um, I mean, wow. I think for for me, for me, I mean, once you get the outside dick, it's definitely curtains. But no, I think outside dick the whole sick. Woo, child. No, so I I think that like from my own personal experience, it's over for me. Like when like the dynamic changes for me, like when I'm not encouraged or enthusiastic to do the things that I used to do. So it's like in like my last real actual like breakup, I feel like we probably broke up me. I was emotionally detaching myself probably like a good four or five months prior to the actual mm-hmm. breakup. Mm-hmm. So like for me it was like ugh, like <coughs> it's like I where I used to be like all for the good morning texting shit little shit at first. Mm-hmm. It's like now I don't really care if I text you. Then you text me good morning and I'm like mm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and I wouldn't even respond sometimes mm-hmm. just because I'm just like, anyway. And then it's like we weren't spending as much time together anymore because mm-hmm. it's just like, and I wasn't, whereas it used to bother me, I didn't care no more. Mm-hmm. So it's like we're not spending time together. Little things that I'm doing or that you were doing don't phase me anymore. I'm not doing them. And when you're doing them, I'm, you're not getting the same reaction that you used to get from me. I'm not enthused about spending time with you. I'm finding other things to do with my time that I would normally give to you. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, well, we would go out. It's like, now nah, I want to go out with friends. I want to go do this, or I want to be by myself. And it just created like a buffer zone between us. So, Sean, how do you know? How do you feel when you when you know the relationship is over? What are some things that are occurring, whether it is in your mind or, you know, Yo, out I, in the open? I think we all kind of, like, feel the same thing. Like, I was, <laughs> I was going through a breakup. No, and, like, um, mm-hmm. What? <sighs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? I was going through a breakup, and I had um, I was uh pulling out uh, I was going oh, you to my car, and I was going to my car. I was about to pull out the driveway, and then my girlfriend at the time, I can tell she was talking to a nigga, and then she tried to get off the phone while she got like I was like, all right, and just and I went to go play baseball. Like you really don't give a fuck no more. Yeah, it's like you you can do whatever. Like if you're talking to somebody, please go talk to them. Yeah. You know, be happy. Um, you stop. You don't. Um, you don't, you don't spend as much time. You know, like certain. Like if you have like date nights and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you don't. You don't go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, little stuff that you know. I guess if you are into buying, if one of your love languages is buying gifts, stop buying gifts. Mm-hmm. You just don't give a fuck. If you, I don't know, if you guys talk to your significant throughout the day, you know those conversations like. You know, you're not you're not talking to him. Start so, starting to fight so you can get away. I, but hey, how do you? you okay, not, you're not even fighting no more. Like, are uh, you right? 
So that so for me it was like that. So for me, and at some time I'd be like, damn, it's only been a year, and some of the shit I don't I don't remember thoroughly because I don't think about that shit like that. But I um I know for me, at one point in a relationship, I could see the end. Like I could see like, okay, this could last a year, another couple years, but yeah. I know this is not gonna last forever. Like I knew that, and I yeah. and these are things that I've expressed. I don't just you know have it in yeah. my own mind, but like that, <coughs> and um. When you just don't feel like trying, when you don't want to try, because and what I want to, wanted to uh, ask y'all too, because I know that relationships have want to have their struggles, mm-hmm. and and it, how do you know the difference between if it's just like a little relationship struggle, or there's just a hard time in a relationship, because or mm-hmm. the downtime, and it's not the breakup time. That's the hardest thing for me because I feel like you you really go through the same stuff. It's mm-hmm. it's up to you and like the courage to say, okay, am I going to keep on? This issue is not being resolved. Yeah, it's time to hang it up. Yeah, mm, I think for me, it. I mean, I understand that relationships have rough patches and stuff like that's not always going to be smooth sailing, mm-hmm. but it's when I don't want to try anymore. That's when I feel like it's over mm-hmm. because I could we I could go through a rocky patch with a nigga, but still feel like you know what mm-hmm. that's still bad. I love him. Like I want to be with him. Mm-hmm. Versus it's like it's gone beyond just a rough patch, and it's just like I just can't do this shit no more. Like. Yeah. Like, in my last breakup, I, like, when we broke up, when I officially broke up with him, I hadn't seen that nigga in, like, a month. Mm-hmm. Damn. Nigga was four minutes up the road. I hadn't seen him in a month oh, because yeah. it was just, like, and it's just, like, I was just, like, entertaining the thought mm-hmm. of dealing with somebody else. Right. Like, not, like, I'm dealing with somebody else, but I'm just, like, you know, where it's, to, like, I would see niggas and be, like, oh, you look good, but, you know, I'm happy, you know. Mm-hmm. Then it gets to the point where I was just, like, damn, I mean, like, I would talk to him. Like, yeah. you know, you start even even considering it. You might even start entertaining conversations with coworkers or acquaintances that you wouldn't entertain before. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. they might become a little bit, you know, more lengthier. You might even start going out with them, even if you're not physically doing anything with them. You're, you're, you're uh, you opening yourself up. Back. You, yeah, you, you know. start flirting. You know, you start flirting back. And... You just really become like mentally drained. I think yeah. um, a lot of times I start, and it wasn't a, even about like other women. I would just find interest in other things and then always do that. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I play basketball. I'm always playing basketball. I was playing basketball three times a week. Now I'm playing eight times a week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you just yeah. you don't want to be around that person. You want to do everything wherever that person is. You don't want to be where that person is. Yeah. And it's, yeah. oh, go ahead. it's a two way street though, because I feel like I felt like the end was coming, and mm-hmm. I felt like he could feel that I felt like mm-hmm. he could sense that I felt like this is this is about to end, mm-hmm. yeah. and he was ducking the fuck out of me when I was trying to have that conversation. Like, yeah, we yeah. go ahead. I remember you talked about that on a um, previous episode, on mm-hmm. like an old, oh, yeah, old he episode. Dodged the yeah, fuck yeah. out of. I mean, this man started working that part time. Mm-hmm. Hella nights a week. Like, you don't even work on Mondays. Now you at work on Mondays. I know. I, we don't normally <laughs> get this deep on the podcast, so I want to take it a little deep, right? Because mm-hmm. I was listening to something, well, I was reading somewhere where they was basically saying how um, how love is so subjective, mm-hmm. you know? And I had tweeted about this. I don't know if y'all saw it, but love yeah, is subjective. Like, like, like no, nah. no, for real. So you can literally, I feel like you can ask a couple a married or mm-hmm. just dating, like, what does love mean, mean to you? And if you ask them separately, I feel like you will get separate answers. Or I think that even if you get a good answer, I feel like people don't really understand what love is. And, like, me going through this this journey, like, this new journey of, like, just being single and learning so much about myself separate from anybody else mm-hmm. and just, like, growing to understand that and just improving I had to really think about that because how do you, if you don't really know what love means to you, how are you going to expect a person to show that, you know what I'm saying, that type of, that type of, that type of thing to you? Or how can you uh, say, look, this is what, this is how I'm loved or whatever. How can you even require that if you don't even know, like it's not, it's more than just a feeling. So I just wanted to ask y'all, what does it mean to y'all? We'll start. You know, what, Sean, yeah. what? what does love mean to you? Because it's, it's an unquantifiable, you cannot quantify love. Question. Yeah. I- you can't measure it. You can't. Yeah, you can't. Um, go ahead, Yada. I'll come back to me. That's a good. That's a good question. I, mm-hmm. I, I honestly never even asked myself that. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a good question I ask because I will have to really sit down and think about it. Yeah. See, oddly enough, I don't really feel like it's something that can necessarily be defined. I just feel like it's something that I just know. That I just, I just, I just know it. Like I couldn't put it into words. Like love, because for me, I feel like when you say this is what love is, it's A, B, and C. You know what I'm saying? Or if I tell to somebody, you. yeah, to so, me, to, to me, you. I'm okay. speaking solely for myself. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. for me, I feel like that's just like if somebody told me, 
You know what I'm saying? What I don't want you to know what it is that you, I don't want you to pinpoint what it is that you love about me mm. because any of those things can be taken it away. And if mm. you take those away, then where's the love? I feel like it's just, I don't know. For me, it's it's an emotion. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 so many things that contribute to it that I couldn't really pinpoint, like, and say, well, this is love to me. It's, you know, it's devotion. It's unconditional. It's not because I don't think any love is unconditional, to mm-hmm. be honest. Like, I maybe feel that. for your kids. Yeah, only for, I, and I said this on, pre- I feel like the only unconditional love is between parents and kids. Honestly, I don't think that any, well, you know what? <sighs> it, I, I could kind of take that back. Part. Only I will say, I don't think it's necessarily unconditional. I feel like the confusion is love itself. Like, I can love you and not be with you. The mm-hmm. relationship mm-hmm. is conditional. The love might not be conditional. So maybe well, that's good, that y'all. Body. Yeah. But I don't really feel like I can really put it into definitive words. I thought about it. I, when I listened to that, I was like, damn, I never really thought about it until recently mm-hmm. what it is to me. And after like really like soul searching and just like really like digging deep into like my thoughts and my feelings, what I think love is to for me though. To, and this is a working mm-hmm. definition, by mm-hmm. the way. I think for one, it is when you can truly accept a person's flaws. Like, truly mm-hmm. accept their flaws. Like, understand that, of course, everybody got their shit, but, like, this is the shit where they come short at, and I still, like, I accept the, I accept those, those you know, ugly parts of them. Another thing is when you're well, willing to sacrifice or be selfless for their best interests. Gotcha. And then um, when you, you feel a way about them more than, of course, more than other people around you. Like if more people, okay, so like somebody can piss you off or say something <coughs> about you or do something to, you know, against you. And you're like, oh, fuck them. They bitch ass nigga, da, 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 da. But then someone that you love, it hurts more. Or when they do something that, that is for you, you appreciate it more. Like you just have stronger feelings toward mm-hmm. that person. And it could be, you know, a nigga. It could be a, a female you're dealing with or like a, a family member or friend or, you know, right. say all those things apply. But it's a working definition. Definition, but to me, that's what that's what love is to to how how you love someone. To me, that's good. See, I don't. I don't want, what I will say is, like you said, the the relationship is conditional. But I don't think love ever runs out. Yeah. Like every woman that I love, I mm-hmm. still love. Maybe mm-hmm. not like in love or you know in that way, but I still. Right, but you still got some form of love for that. Yeah, like I can't say that every I can everybody that I've once loved or that mm-hmm. I thought that I loved. I don't I don't feel that way. I mean, you know, about them today. Like not everybody that I felt like that. Like I don't think I understood it even to know. And I think that mm-hmm. I think that you that not all love it has to be like eternal. Yeah. I think you could love them for that point. But just me like just growing and understanding what it is, I just don't think that it applies to back then. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, any woman that I said that I loved and yeah, actually yeah. meant that if they needed me and reached out, I would help them. Mm. Well, see, for but me, that's not all the bitches, though. With, with Some me. of them I was lying and saying, I was, you know, yeah, I love them. Yeah. The pussy. For me, what's interesting <laughs> is um, <laughs> how you that. mentioned, you know, you're defining love for yourself as including um, being selfless. And see, for me, it's different because I'm a naturally selfless person. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to love you to be selfless because it's just something that comes natural to me mm-hmm. so for me that wouldn't necessarily be a part of it but I understand where I you're coming from a lot of women too for right. me for me, a yeah, lot of women a... and, and women that are mo- <coughs> um, moms cause I would cause in this and, and don't get me wrong my working definition is those things combined because I could be selfless for a, per- a stranger I just met and just to help them you know to, for their best interest and I don't mm-hmm. necessarily love them that's just one selfless act or whatever right. but it just goes along with that and to truly be able to sacrifice for someone like that doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. like you said you could do that for, like I said you could do that for a stranger but I'm you're saying, saying all of these things stand alone different but combined yeah. is what makes love. okay I get what you're saying to, you know, to me no of course so you don't far. have to keep saying that we know it's for you yeah. I cause I don't want to be the no, authority it's, it's, on, subje- it's subjective yeah. so nobody you ask a hundred people, you get a hundred definitions. You thought somebody was giving you that? Um, yeah, because people title. think I'm no, the authority on life and no, all that shit. That. And I'm still learning, just like everyone Who's else. People? So don't okay, don't put me on a pedestal. You right? know what love to me is the, the biggest thing because y'all hit most of the points. Mm-hmm. Compromise. It is because okay. bitches don't be want to compromise. Or the willingness to. Yeah, the willingness to. 
that might go into accepting someone's flaws, I guess. No, I don't see how the. But what's really acceptance? You just like, all right, I still deal with you, even though you have them, or like, you and, you and like flaws and like, like physical flaws, <laughs> personality flaws, personality flaws, physical. We know financial flaws ain't for you. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. <laughs> all right, no, like, I should even say. Let nothing. me tell you this: finances is something that you can measure. You can quantify that. We're not. This is the whole totally that's a separate flaw thing. Now. That's a flaw. what short pockets is a flaw. Uh, short pockets don't come across my t- my desk. They don't come across. It's a flaw. So, so you what don't flaw, love nobody. So what flaw would you be willing to accept? Like say, like what flaw? I don't know. Just give yeah, me give me, give an me one. You got to give me an example. I don't know. I don't know what's a flaw to you. A, p- a person, uh, it's flaws know, it's, is something it's, different. Because you know, different people have different bullshit with them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and including myself. So. It just depends on a person. It depends. Yeah, it depends on a person because there's certain flaws that I would deal with. It's a. It was like it would be a so flaw. I could deal with two one different dudes had the same flaw. You might. Oh, depending on the dude, mm-hmm. I wouldn't accept it. I wouldn't accept one. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Depen- it depends on the guy. Depen- it depends on how I feel about the, the guy. Most money he that, that's, not, right. that, that, that's, <laughs> that's not. That's not true. By the way, that's I, not true. It's not your, about how, who has the most money. What's one of your ex's flaws that you hated but you you dealt with? That's a good question. Okay, um, I didn't. One of the flaws it was it was a personality. It was a personality flaw. It was that you know he was he was reserved to the point where where to the point where you know if, if it was a family event or something like that mm-hmm. he'll like, hey how y'all doing and go sit down somewhere and like don't say shit for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. That shit used to that shit used to. Me. And we talked about this because we talked about how me and you have similar personalities. Yeah. 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 But is that a flaw or is that him? Is that a flaw? To me. To me. Okay. And that's it what I'm saying. It's kind of subjective. But I, accepted it, but I accepted it because that's, you mm. know, I accepted that because I just like, look, that's just how he is. But being able to communicate and like being able to speak up because not everybody is outgoing. But when someone speaks to you, can you project? Can you, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. maybe and then, spoken. Mm. Or he didn't fuck with your family. Either one, I did not like it, <laughs> but I accepted it. Because I think that that's where that's where the gray area comes in when you're trying to like identify what exactly like flaws and stuff are. Because I, for for me, I feel like uh, like there's like severe character issues that I wouldn't consider flaws. It's like no nigga, you need to work on this. Mm-hmm. Like for me, that's not a flaw. You fucked up, and you need to figure it the fuck out. Because it's mm-hmm. like some people use that. This is the way I am to justify being no. shitty people, yeah. and I, so I feel like I don't. I wouldn't consider those to be flaws. I'm like, no, nigga, you a fuck boy. I'm a I'm a yeller, mm. and not even like you when don't I, say. Yeah. Yeah, what? That, your your mic literally is all the way down. What you but yelling? You sound loud because no I had to balance way. it. I had to turn it all. I had to turn it all the way down. So, yeah, so no way, I'm a yeller, buddy. but it's not. The thing is, when I yell, it's not. I'm not necessarily mad. But it's yeah. gonna, it may come across that yeah, in a conversation that I'm mad, but the shit out of a bitch. that's just how <laughs> we talk. My, and I, my mom talked to us like that when we were kids growing up. My sister talks like that. I talk like that. So it's not one of those things I'm like, oh, it's just me. I definitely try to you know, you work have, at it. But I feel like you can have a flaw that's work that you're working on, mm-hmm. that's your, but it's just a natural, like we naturally are a certain way that we have to like. Right. Fight against it, like to mm-hmm. work on it daily or you know regularly. Yeah, right. I was. What's a flaw? What are one of y'all flaws? I just said what my flaws. Me, was. well, oh. y'all. Do. <laughs> I'm trying to shit, man. It was just hard to fucking. It's like no. Um, don't give me one of those work. Those. What are your? What is your shit, weak, weaknesses? And yeah. then you and be it's like, hard that the people can't <laughs> can't take. You know what I'm saying? That's a flaw. Design. That. No, for um for me, I'm an uh. I'm I'm definitely an overthinker. Mm-hmm. Um, I have mild to moderate anxiety, and as a result of my, well, no, I don't know which came first, the chicken or the fucking egg. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the anxiety is causing the overthinking uh-huh. or the overthinking is causing anxiety. Mm-hmm. But I am an overthinker, and I I do a lot with that. Like, mm-hmm. and I try not to, but it's not it's not easy to get myself out of that frame of mind yeah. because it's like, oh, this happened, but nah, but what about this, 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 this? It's like I, I will come up mm-hmm. with a hundred different mm-hmm. scenarios from mm-hmm. one situation and I'll drive myself insane because of it because, um, yeah, I draw my own conclusions based off of my overthinking. Yeah. the What saves me is I have filter mechanisms in place 
like friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I have friends that I feel uh, I filter myself through, mm-hmm. and it saves me from making an ass out of myself in romantic situations mm-hmm. because it's like, oh, well, he, you said you was going to your mother's house, but no, your mother said she was going to. But then he said that, you know what I'm saying? And this is me. But instead of communicating this to the person that I'm dealing with, this text gonna go to Sean or somebody yeah. else, and it's gonna be. Girl, you, you're tripping. Like, no. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay. I Sometimes right. I just need someone to say that shit out through. loud. Right. And so I'm just like, okay, let me bring it in. And yeah, it, keep, it keeps me from creating drama. Do y'all think all women overthink? I literally was just having a conversation with my friend on the way to the podcast. And she was like, yo, I just be overthinking. I said, yo, you got a vagina. No, I that think just it's, comes I think with the package. I think mm-hmm. it's levels to it. It is. It's yeah. definitely levels to it. No, it's levels. But like, all women overthink. Um. Well, that's, I mean, it depends. I feel like any, any, Step above surface level for a man is overthinking. Mm. To me, I feel like you put any extra thought into a bitch, you're overthinking. Like, yeah. you be like, I'm going to my mother's house. She'd be like, why? Overthinking. But you know what I'm saying? But it's like, for me, it's like, why are you going to your mother's house when you said your mother was going to Mexico for two weeks? And then, you know, I'm, yeah. that's, that's, that's when I start. <laughs> like, no, I mean, that was super random. It wasn't a real situation, but like. I feel like uh, you, as far as women over, I think that's a human thing. It depends. I definitely do. Women are more emotional. We are more in tune with our emotions and by, by nature. You got a lot of niggas who are too. So shout out to y'all. But um, <laughs> I think, but men are men have emotion too. But I'm just saying, like women, we we filter it out because we're like we're just more we more emotional. But I understand what you mean. Y'all, I'm guilty of that as well. But I will just think of it in, like, in my own brain like a crazy person and be like, well, what about this? What if he did that? What, what if they did that? Or whatever. And then I'll just go and be like, you know what? You tripping. Wait. See, I be wanting to say Calm something. Down. I be wanting to say something. And I be like, <sighs> yeah. let me copy and paste this te- whole text that yeah. I was about to send this nigga and send it to my bro so he can tell me I done fucking lost my mind. But then there's times where he like, nah, you're not tripping. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. bet. Copy, paste, send. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, one of my flaws, I feel like I mean, you know. I know you got a long list, but just think, just narrow it down to one. I, no, honestly, this, one. yeah, I've been <laughs> literally working so hard, you know, just to better myself as a person, whether in relationship, like when it comes to men and then when it just comes to like people in general. But one of my things is sometimes I feel like I get so caught up in my own shit that I disregard like other people in their mm. shit. And it's like, like I like everybody. Now I got like two hundred fifty text messages. I got mm-hmm. a bunch of DMs. Oh, that's like it? I just don't feel so like not. no. I'm just I just don't I don't I don't like communicating with people. I don't feel like communicating with. Mm. But I be but I communicate with people who I do. I don't know. I just feel like I I feel like that's a, a flaw. I think that's a little selfish, honestly. We all talk, right? Mm-hmm. You bitch. It's like I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. What do you think is one of Yada's flaws and what is one of my flaws. Wow. Oh, wow. That I got to go first. I mean, we all going to go. All right. All right. We all go. <laughs> okay. Mm. I think Yada's flaw, and this is me being totally transparent. She might be mad at me after this, but this no is no disclaimer podcast. Yes. I think that. It's about to be my last night on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so go. So go, one go, of y'all that's close to me. Okay. Go with me first. Okay. Go, go with me first. So Sean, I think that one of your flaws is um, sometimes uh, inconsistency. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that you you underestimate yourself a lot. I think that you don't you don't. I think the inconsistency comes from you just not think not you know being brave enough to just jump out there and mm-hmm. do some shit. And um, I think that's that's a that's a flaw of yours. Um, to me, I'm trying to think of, of something else because I just want I really want to just like oh that's lay good. It I mean, torture like ass. No, I really want to torture you. For no, real. I, it's healthy because yeah. Sometimes people do not. I've been in relationships where I can tell my partner something mm-hmm. and they don't receive it well. Yeah. But if somebody else tells them that, I'm like, yeah. Bitch, I've been telling you that all along. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So times it's good to hear it from your friends. I know people yeah. like that mm-hmm. who aren't receptive from certain people. Yeah. But, but why wouldn't you be receptive? That's honestly, 
that's how you know your relationship is bad. Because no, because yeah. some people right like there. to be some people like to be spoon fed, and some I'm not gonna hold you. Sometimes being forced to look in the mirror with certain situations, yeah. it, it hits harder when it comes yeah. from certain people. Like it's certain things. Like mm-hmm. if my dude told me I was getting fat, I'd be like, God damn, bitch! Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I would feel away. Mm-hmm. But if my homegirl like yeah, you just like putting on, it's like it it it, it just. But that's how we are in society. Mm-hmm. Certain celebrities could say something and we'll receive it like, oh, they said that's they the man for that. Then they another one say like, shut your bitch ass up. You, right. you know, you date white women anyway, type shit. You know what I'm saying? It just depends on the messenger. And sometimes the times. message, the manner in which the message is conveyed. To. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So yeah, that's that's really yeah. all I could uh, as far as flaw. You know what I'm saying? Uh, other than I think you your, your face. But I think you're <laughs> <laughs> no, but and then y'all yeah. to. Uh, it's time to it's time to get into you right now. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And I'm not a and judge. Look at, and she looking at her screen like she had to jump right Yeah, <laughs> let me right. pull it up. <laughs> but I had a feeling this shit was going to come out. Let me tell you this. That was bitch a random question. <laughs> that was a random question. I, I really want to know. Yeah, caps, it was. caps, caps. <laughs> I feel like I feel like um, I feel like your flaw that I've noticed because I only have a scope that I have. Is that um, sometimes I feel like you don't know when to take a hint from people. I think that you let people go way too far before you you realize that it's not a good look for you. And uh, emotionally, that's not good. And it makes you more emotional because you're giving them too much rope to hang themselves. Is that in reference to anybody or are you talking about dudes? In, it, no, in general. Oh, okay. In general. In general. People like people yeah, I was that talking about disappoint our you. I wasn't even talking about our like. Oh no, I, 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 I mean I, that's a probably, personality for because yeah, but I don't it carries know, over to your relationship. I don't right. know. I right. don't know what, um, what uh that describes. Like I don't know a word for that or what that goes back to. But that's just a symptom of something that mm-hmm. is a flaw. No, I know exactly what you. you mean. No, yeah. you're absolutely right though. And it's for me my biggest issue is in being a genuinely selfless person, you tend to try to give people way more the benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. than you should. And it's like, in hindsight, you're like, you know what, I probably should have been extra shit because mm-hmm. you've been, ooh, whatever, for a while. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's like, you try to, for me, I try to find the good in people mm-hmm. because I just feel like, eh, some, you know, I, I feel like, I mean, on surface level that everyone has some sort of redeeming yeah. quality. And I try to look for that. Or if you ever expose me to that in you, mm-hmm. and then you do some dumb shit, I try to, you know, kind of cycle yeah. back to that. And no, but you're right though. Like it's it's absolutely it's yeah. something that I've acknowledged and that I work on. Yeah. Um. At this point now, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of I'm trying not to go off the deep end though because you have to find that healthy medium where it's like yeah. okay, I'm not being like I'm not giving people too much, but I'm also not you know it's fuck everybody. Cut. Right. You know what? Exactly. Like, right. 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 Gotcha. So you go ahead, y'all. Um, oh, this is hard. Shit. This is really hard. It's like you get put on get the, the spot. Get like, the good one with Sean. Yeah, I, was, um, I was saying we're going to be vulnerable enough. It's I vulnerable know. time, motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't want to um, be vulnerable anymore. It's, it's, it's hard for me to think of one for you, Sean. I feel like Sabre kind of nailed it with that way. I don't really see a whole lot, I think. Because you really, you are a stand-up person. As you much can, as a, you, you're a little too nice dude. sometimes. You, mm. You're a little too nice sometimes, and I think that sometimes you let shit slide that you shouldn't let slide. And and just based off of conversations I've had with you, mm-hmm. I'd be feeling like sometimes, like you know, you just be like, no, like you, you, a lot of shit it doesn't bother you. And I mean, it's not necessarily a flaw to have. I mean, I'm talking, you yeah. let a lot of things roll off your yeah, back, yeah, yeah. and you're not re, you don't react to it. And I'm mm-hmm. not saying that's not necessarily a negative thing to not react, but some things deserve a reaction and deserve you airing motherfuckers out. And I feel like you just be chill. Like, you know what? Nah, like, you know, it ain't even no sweat. Like, but I feel like sometimes you need to read some of these motherfuckers for filth mm. because they just deserve it. Because I feel like you, you're you a genuine person and you do a lot for people that you fuck with. And I feel like sometimes people may take advantage of that. And that's when you need to air their ass out. Mm. But you'll just, you'll just roll with it. And you might not cut them off. You might move a little different with them. Mm. But I feel like some of them people need to be cut the fuck off. Yeah. Uh, you right. Me and Sabre were having a conversation via DM oh. earlier, and we were joking, and <laughs> she was like, um, something about when I get rich, and you're just going to be mean, and I was like, honestly, I'm not mean. It's just not in my DNA. Mm. Like, I wouldn't <laughs> even be like me. <coughs> you know what's so crazy? I try to be mean. You sound I, like me, and that's I, why like, I see that I try to be mean, like, 
I could be it's mean, just, y'all. I'm sorry, but go ahead. It, it takes a lot for me to genuinely be mean to someone because I can just mm. be meh. And know. it's very hard because honestly, I should be I should be more mean to women. Mm. But that sounds like Yeah, you're very you're yeah, yes. You're very women very say a lot nice I, I, I was to women and some of these bitches you need to spit in their face. So <laughs> it's it's this lady that I used to deal with and she always just be coming at me crazy on Twitter. I'm like I, first of all, I can't say because as soon as I say something back, women gonna be like, "Yo." But is she joking or she? You know she coming at you crazy. She's being a bitch. Oh, okay, because I was like, and you I, know how some people I used to Twitter date her. Okay. No, she's she's a joke, but it's like, okay, okay bitch, how many times you ain't joke? You know what I mean? Yeah. Mush that you know, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> but then I'm like, first of all, I'm not gonna say anything because that's whack. Yeah. And then I say, well, I'm not gonna follow her because that's whack. So then I just say. That's yeah, just the yeah. person that she is. Yeah, so then I think I you just put these boundaries in place with women, and sometimes, I mean, sometimes they got to get it too. Yeah. And coming from a woman, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but sometimes they got to get it too. But because does, doesn't that look weak? Uh, I don't man? think it oh, looks weak. Wow. I feel like the problem with a lot of these women and these severe character flaws that they have mm-hmm. is that no one ever sets them straight. And they create this stigma that, oh, you can't, like, oh, man, you arguing with a woman. Why you arguing with a woman? You a bitch. You can't do this with a woman. And it, all it is mm-hmm. is is... All that is is protection for them to mm-hmm. continue to be the shitty people that they are without consequence. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you got to air these bitches out. Mm-hmm. I, I disagree with you, Yada. I just think that as a man, you're supposed to take the high road and just maybe block the bitch. But I wouldn't, it would look wild to me if I saw you airing the bitch out on the timeline. Well, well, I ain't, I'm not saying like air out like I'm about, to, I'm about to spill all your tea. But I'm saying when some people get out of pocket with you, mm-hmm. I don't you feel like it it's down. anything wrong for you to carry it or shut it down or, or, or respond mm-hmm. in kind. Because I feel like the reason why they do that shit is because they've created this this scenario where it's men aren't allowed mm-hmm. to respond to these types of things. So, what, so you could drag a nigga all day. As soon as he clap back, it's a problem. And I don't mm-hmm. think that that's okay. So, so I feel like, I feel like what is the I, I don't want to know like what is the cause of that because that's like a, a reaction or like that's like the symptom of like even what I said about you Yada and Sean like what do y'all think is like the root of why is it like I don't think it's a lack of confidence no just too nice it's just but but why though I, it's, it's, I know, sometimes I know it's my, just the way people are I honestly I know people who usually don't care I don't want people to dislike me mm. I honestly, it it bothers me because I feel like I'm such a good person to somebody. Like, yeah. somebody had this, I heard this rumor about me the other day, and I was like, yo, I'm going to beat this shit out this nigga. <laughs> not really, but I'm like, where did that come from? Yeah. I'm not like that at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, basically said I was gossiping, and everybody oh, knows so I nice. don't <laughs> fucking gossip. At all. So it's like, <laughs> but guess what? The other person who might not know me personally, if that person mm-hmm. tells them that, they're going to go off them because they know yeah. them personally. And then, but oh, how often be gossiping like a little bitch? And then nah. that's when I go on my little rant. Y'all little bitch ass niggas, like, mm-hmm. and then it comes out that way. Cause I'm sometimes it really like, I know I'm a lot of things, but like certain things I am not. Mm-hmm. I don't be going around spreading people's business. I don't go around like, I'm quick to say, I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. No, nah, <laughs> and the thing about you is that even if you know something about somebody, you wouldn't you wouldn't say it because you don't want it to be repeated. Period. Right. Like mm-hmm. he won't say it at all, and it could be somebody he trusts with anything. Mm-hmm. But we've had this conversation before where Sean has pointed out that sometimes you might inadvertently spill tea and not realize that you're spilling tea. He mm-hmm. could tell me something about somebody he worked yeah. with, and it could turn out that the person he worked with is cousins with somebody I work with. Mm-hmm. So I'm at work like, girl, let me my friend Sean was talking about his coworker, da, 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 and yeah. the whole time they, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and it's not even malicious. So when he don't want it to be repeated, he's mm-hmm. not gonna say it. I, I can attest to that too. But go ahead, Yada. You uh, you it's, it's on me now. Oh, so yeah. Yada. So then Sean. Yeah, I don't know why though. Like I think yeah. I'm just I just mm-hmm. I just like to see the good in people or try to mm-hmm. find no, the good in people. But you said about Sean and no, I know I'm oh, saying because oh, oh, you were saying gotcha, why, gotcha. why is you that like, like I, that I didn't. Okay. I mean, I can't call it. Um, this is a hard one, so right. I think because uh, I got some. I I got. Some. I can't really. I don't know if I could call it a flaw per can't se. Can't wait till it comes to me. <laughs> I don't know if I could call it a flaw per se, but I do think that. Um, I think that since you've been single and mm-hmm. you've been a, you've been busy. You're always mm-hmm. busy, but I think that that also Always? is no, is definitely I think not it's always. also like a cushion for you though, because mm-hmm. it keeps you out of 
certain situations that you might necessarily not want to be in right now. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I don't really, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like you're necessarily looking to take someone serious. I don't think you're running from it, but you're not like, hey, look, I'm looking down the aisle. What's up with these niggas? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like that kind of is like your, your safety net. Because mm-hmm. you could be busy, which means you don't have to get reeled in too far. You can always mm-hmm. reel it back. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think, I don't know if that's a flaw. Like, And you're saying busy, <laughs> like, as far as, like, friends or, like, or, and, or dudes or, like, both or, like, what you mean? Uh, probably dudes more than anything. But, I mean, and me because you ain't going to my birthday dinner. But that was your biggest fucking flaw. It's like, <laughs> I really, you know, there was a flaw in that whole, that whole thing. Because it's just, like. Because I was first of all, I had a, I had an edible, but I could have still <laughs> could have still like pressed it. But I was just it was honestly it was I ain't gonna hold you. It was selfish. And it was your just flaw like, was you told me you was coming and ain't come. You could have been like I ain't gonna make it. I'd have been like all right, boo. So really, I'm about to leave now. I I I, 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 I wanted to out. honestly. <laughs> I was sitting on the couch. I was like all right. I'm. You know how you look at your phone. You are like all right. Ten minutes. I'm getting up. I'm gonna get up. Mm-hmm. And then. Mm-hmm. All right, ten more minutes. One I'm gonna get up. tea. Cause it, ju- it couldn't peel I, your ass off the, the couch. The shit wasn't rookie. even that lit. It was just I was so, <laughs> but rookie. it's okay. But yeah, rookie. <laughs> but I still could have. I still could have made it. I am a. a I am a rookie. Cause it was like a. It was something. It was a tea. I don't normally yeah. do the yeah. teas like that. But anyway, but yeah, I'm yeah. gonna make fun of you about this for a while. I just want you to it's know okay. that. I understand. My, I understand. My feelings aren't even hurt, but and I just you, feel like it's prime material to make fun of you with. So when I'm wrong, that's one thing about me that I've learned. <laughs> when I'm wrong, I don't, I don't, <coughs> unless I'm joking, you offered you to buy got this. it. Like, Ray was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'll, buy you it, I'll buy you again. But I was you, like, this bitch. Yeah, I, I have, I'll make it right the best way yeah. I can, but. Well, I, I will say that. So Bray don't be having no excuses. I'm like, yeah, this is what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that came from growth. Yeah. I mean, you did put hella ease on tea, but it was okay. She was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I was so fried. I had this. Uh, I had this infused tea. <laughs> I was like, bitch. <laughs> but I already know you were. As soon as yeah. she said infused, I was like, oh, she was how her damn mind. Yeah, I just kept saying, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get up. I mean, and I just ain't. No, it. it was probably but for yeah. the best that you didn't come because some of my guy friends are perverts. So. Oh no. Why you? Why you? <laughs> why you? When you ain't bring her around. Damn, that don't fit. Where, where Coco at? Relax. They didn't try to find something to call you. Where yeah. Coco at? Coco Relax. At? Nah, I had a homegirl around, and she had, like, a low blonde cut. They told me, so where Gold Dust at, man? Bring her back around. It's like, so fucking playing with me. Hey, we do be thinking of some wild names. I be thinking of my, my niggas when they bring Jones around. I be like... Okay, where the little Fila boots at? Fila boots. <laughs> Fila boots. Stop wearing them, young. Stop yeah, wearing them stop. shit. Stop wearing They're them ter- thick ass Fila. They horrible. Let me give it a buck. They're not acceptable for men or women. No. <laughs> it's like OB sneakers already borderline as it is, but some of them you no. can get away with, but yeah. not the Fila's, dog. And then, then I be saying people, it's Fila been making some cool hoodies, right? But I'm like, how you gonna wear them? Because you can't wear no Fila. No, yeah. yeah, like right. so Fila. Like, Fila you better get a slide. <laughs> The Fila shoe looks exactly like the Fila box that it came in. It just looked like you put your but foot in the box on it. and walked out the store. All right, all right. It, got, it got laces. Yes. We got Booba. Go ahead, Sean. Sean, our flaws. To, what all right, you, so what y'all the first. Perceive our flaws today. I already know what your flaw is. And this goes along, uh, al- um, along the lines with you being selfless. You give too much too fast. Mm, yeah. Extremely yeah. too fast. And the thing is, you're not dumb. No one's finessing you. That's who you are. When you when you like somebody, or, and honestly, this could be friends, relationships. I'm gonna give you one hundred. I'm not. I'm not a half ass friend. I'm not a half ass partner. Sorry, Ooh, guys. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Niggas don't be all that great. Not all of them. You know what I'm saying? No, I feel that. Yeah. Women have to. Y'all gotta move slower. Yeah. You gotta move slower. Now I'm not saying. That. I'm not saying hide your emotions or. Yeah, yes, I am. So, um, <laughs> it's... Yeah, with my money, w- trying w- to get all that shit. So, hey, nah, no, this, is the right. thing, this is the thing with women, right? Anytime you start dating a guy, it's a gamble. Because yeah. you don't know, you, you, you feel like, all right, if I hold back, he's he's not going to think that I like him as mm-hmm. much. And then, like, I don't want him to think that. But then if you give too much, then the nigga will be like, oh, it's she's sweet, sweet for it. Mm-hmm. So then, women will ask me, well, what do I do? I was like, you got to roll the dice. That's you true. you you honestly have to roll the dice because you never know a guy's true intentions because guys are manipulators. Um, 
we can wear a mask. Like for women to be smarter than men, when it comes no, when it comes, it comes to relationships, to it's totally we're up here and then the women are down here. We were just you know talking about that. Men can be a totally different person, and then you think like, okay, I got a, a sweet one, like a good, one. and then like you're like, yo, this ain't the nigga that. Yeah. I thought. By that time, you done pulled so much of yourself emotionally, like mentally. You think like shit. Now I gotta stay because like he's yeah. draining me. Like hopefully, you know, right. he can see the good in me, see that I'm doing all this good stuff for him, and he will eventually change. It doesn't work like that. Nope. It doesn't work like that. So what I've seen with you, you just give so m- much of yourself, but that's you. So it's hard to say, but y'all don't do that because that's you. No, no, you're absolutely right. And that's something I try to scale back with. It's hard because mm-hmm. I'm one of those people who, like, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Like, I'm very transparent. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. like I, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, but, y'all, I had to learn that, too. I was mm-hmm. like that, too. And you mm-hmm. ha- you you get your heart, your feelings hurt. You learn. You learn. Mm-hmm. The f- and you well, what, it, what it is, is it, what, what keeps me from, from, from fixing that is I'm so resilient. Mm-hmm. And for me, nothing really gets me down for long. Mm-hmm. So it's like I might be bothered by it, but it's like I my refractory period, like the, my ability to recover from shit, is is so swift mm-hmm. yeah. that it's like I keep doing the same shit because it's just like I mean, shit, I bounce back. It's always never like you know what I'm saying. Nah, like for it'd me, take me a good fourteen it, days to get over it, nigga. It don't <laughs> shut you, the fuck up. You know it don't really <laughs> take me out the game because it's like a nigga could blow me and I can meet a nigga tomorrow and be like, hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? And I'm back at square one. Like you're you know. a warrior. You've been through a lot of storms. <laughs> one of my favorite quotes is y'all know I'll be having quotes. <laughs> Smooth seas never made a skilled sailor. Mm. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I, me and you are I like because I feel like <laughs> no, what the fuck that well, was? Well, that's done. <laughs> it was. It's been done. That oh, okay. shit is amazing. Thank you're you. lucky we we're just on the show. I really wanted to go upstairs <laughs> and get another batch, but no. I, and that's the thing is, you are super resilient. It. <laughs> um, I so, am. Yeah. So it's it's a blessing and a curse because it doesn't keep me down for long, but it keeps me mm-hmm. doing the same shit yeah. over and over again mm-hmm. because it's like, I mean, the yeah. last nigga ain't take me out, so fuck it. Like, he ain't take me, yeah. he, like, not like take me yeah. out, like, on dates. I get what I mean, you're like, saying. Yeah, he take, ain't take you me. out of the game. Right, right. Yeah. so it's like, fuck it. I bounce back. I just always be feeling like, I mean, it's always, yeah. we're not about to run out of niggas. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, remember when they read the Declaration of Independence the first time? <laughs> no, I wasn't there. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh it's like your brain. I, this is your this is your flaw. I think you excel in so many like areas in life. Like I know your family is super proud of you. You're an excellent barber. Um, you network well. Um, people respect you in business, especially being a black woman. And that's not that no knock against black women. Mm-hmm. To get respect from men in the industry that you are, mm-hmm. and you get it. That's dope. You're a wonderful entrepreneur. I think you excel in so many, and you really. Y'all, she she don't be lying. She don't need y'all <laughs> financially. <laughs> she sabray at your age, you got your shit together. This is where I think you don't have your shit together. Okay, I think you are not as brave emotionally as you think that you are. Mm. I think you get yourself in situations where you think that you can handle it, but you're in over your head, and it's because. You control every other aspect in your life, and you feel like this is one of those aspects that I can't control, and I just feel like you just have not been experienced en- yeah, enough. And you're still, true. and I hate to put this on it, but, and it's not, age doesn't always take a factor, but yeah. the older you are, the more experience you have. Well, yeah. So I just think you lack experience because also, like you say, you be talking about you had a whole phase. I, I think you had like a whole like Thanksgiving break. You know what I'm saying? You had like a real whole season. You know what I'm saying? And then you've been in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? You were faithful in that relationship. So you, your time being right, that's single the worst part. in your adult like, life, you really haven't. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So when you see certain situations, man, I got this, bitch, I'm like, all right. I'm going to let little bro rock out. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, we ain't going to, you know, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, check out the Harlem Bay episode. Oh, <laughs> See? <laughs> I did a whole episode about it <laughs> for y'all niggas to listen but, but, to my pain. <laughs> to my pain. <laughs> but but the great thing, that that's something that can be corrected. Yeah. And it will be. Yeah. Because you're super smart and you can adapt. Yeah. You can adapt. You're a fucking chameleon, I will say that. I didn't say you look like a chameleon, 
but you are a chameleon. You can adapt. So, man, you going to be you on your way. Thank you, you Sean. Your way. But I do, I definitely agree. I, shit, I fucking agree with that shit. Yeah, the the relationship was so long, and the, literally, this has like <coughs> been the real only single. Because before that, it was like 19, 18, 19, yeah. 20. You twenty, and then I got with, with my ex when I was uh, twenty one. So yeah, it, it, I don't have that much experience. And even now, like, I'm learning so much, like I said, about myself separate from anyone else. And I'm really, really, like, paying attention. Because I'm not just trying to get into another relationship real quick just to be Mm. with a nigga. I want to know who I am. Mm. So it's just like a teacher. If you haven't mastered something, how can you teach someone else? How am I going to teach a nigga how I am Mm. and what I bring to the table if I don't fucking know? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know. I'm studying myself. I became a student of people. I pick up on shit. I never used to really observe people like that and get to know people on the deeper level, like their what they're saying and what they're not saying. Their non non their nonverbal and verbal, you know, responses to things. Now I pay attention to all of that shit. But you right though. I be in over my head sometimes. <laughs> but I've yeah. I've had my moments this yeah. year. <laughs> but, yeah. but that's all part for the course though. That's just yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. that's that's where the experience comes from. Yeah. yeah. Damn. That was we I wasn't ready expecting that. Self. It wasn't I as bad you. as I thought. I, it wasn't as bad as I thought. I feel like I'm leave here and not get these niggas nothing no more. Sorry, Stain. <laughs> <laughs> Sean said you can't get it no more, bro. So, no, nah, see, look, <laughs> I, I did not. No, oh, oh, so um, there was an interesting tweet by Reason from TDE that I um saved, and I wanted to ask y'all. He said, um, "You still gotta ask somebody to be your girlfriend, or is it just assumed by action?" thought that was very interesting ass no. like shit let me let me sorry fellas once again ask <laughs> ladies these niggas need to ask y'all okay <laughs> really yeah hmm. yeah because you you going to think you in something that you ain't and then he going to say i ain't never said it oh we i thought we was just i thought we was just kicking it so you, you, how do okay niggas be like I mean yeah so I be you, man, hitting look, you raw I took you to my mother house you know what I'm saying we went look, to the family planning place and talked about this yeah. but I mean we ain't serious okay <laughs> look I like you I hope the feeling is mutual I don't want to see anybody else do you want to see anybody else yeah 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 no nah, no nah. Sean you the coolest nigga out here like you the mm-hmm. waviest nigga I ever been with you know what I'm saying I don't want to see no other nigga. honestly I was waiting for you to say it goes like that and then you say look all right so not nah, like well. Would you say we're mutually, you know, dating with exclusive? Is that what you would say? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Man, write me a motherfucking note. I like you. Do you like me? Will you be my girlfriend? Yes mm-hmm. or no? Because then I'm going to create a maybe box. Mm-hmm. Check or, me. <laughs> or you can claim it and just see what you do. You walk in to the uh, the Friendsgiving. Hey, y'all. Uh, this my this girl, girl Yada. That, oh, bam. No, spam. I feel like you have to say girlfriend. I feel like when you nah, say girl, because some niggas be like, oh, yeah, that's my girl. And they don't even nah, mean, like, na- my girl, my yeah, girl. Yeah. I ain't go- no, niggas is not, <coughs> they're not saying any word that's in girlfriend. They're not saying in, they're not saying girl. But they're damn sure saying friend, though. So <laughs> yeah, my homegirl, that's a homegirl. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah this y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, if a nigga just say your name. No, that ain't it. Sorry. I said, man, is this my man's right here? This my fuck yeah, with this, him. Yeah, this, this stink or whatever. This stink right here. Stink. I need this, a uh, nigga. No, nah, if a so, nigga say, yo, this my girl, nah, he mean that shit. I feel like you should still ask because who said I wanted to be your motherfucking girl? So, you annoying her face when she, hey, <laughs> hi, everyone. Nah, you so, be like, yeah, yes. this my girl, y'all. To me. Now oh we got to have a talk on the balcony and shit. <laughs> <laughs> See what you started? To, to me, I feel like. <laughs> show me show me by action i mean because you if a nigga listen if a nigga starts showing me by action that like look i'm i'm doing this for you i'm doing that i'm showing you that you i'm investing in you meaning whether that's time or you know gifts or mm. whatever it, it it is you invest in me shit you my motherfucking boyfriend i ain't mm. fucking with no other <laughs> niggas because I mean, that I'm good, a, but, no. but i understand i would appreciate the clarity of mm. look I, I like you. I want, I, I want to see where this goes. I want to, you know, try to be, I want us to be exclusive or I want to be exclusive. Which I don't even know how niggas say it now. But, but you can't make that call. The man got to make that of call. Of course. Okay. For sure. For, I would, that's what I'm saying. I would appreciate that clarity gotcha. from him. But it, I'm show me. Show me. Both me, please. I need both. I, I like both. I would me prefer and both. Then ask but me. showing is more important to me. But this is saying. But I would prefer both. But this is saying under the circumstances, he is already showing you. 
Like we're past the no, point. You, He's showing you. Showing how, me isn't oh. telling me that we're in an exclusive relationship. Because if that by that logic, I'm in an exclusive relationship. I'm True. not in an exclusive relationship. Well, so, mm-hmm. but all the elements are there. But we haven't decided that we're exclusive. So until we had that conversation, yeah, that's just what it is. No matter how much you show me, you doing for me, you there yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. We talk all day, every mm-hmm. day. We you, it's all dates. It's all mm-hmm. this. You, you, all of that shit is there. But it's like if we haven't defined that. I ain't yeah. gonna say it don't mean nothing, but it's not. It don't mean that. Ideally, after the showing and after we mutually showing each other that we're there for each other and that just you know making each other fully available to each other, then after that, after it flows in that direction, then I think that it's it's good to have a, a it, the conversation of exclusivity. Don't have to be all drawn out. It could be like yeah, that's when you had that power. Yeah, like, just had that. Look, I ain't eating all the like, bitches out. But nah. You sucking up a nigga's dick? Nah, that's when you like hey, nah. That's when it, as much I mean, as. As cliche as it sounds, as much people talk make fun of that whole what are we or what are we doing conversation, it's necessary. You all right, so what are we doing? You I don't know what like saying? that well, what are we doing well, question. However you want to stage exclu- it. You, you should be exclusive. You agree? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but that's how you, you start You need clarity off. and we, everything. You go to a job, they'll be like, well, you probably be making between like 50 or 70. No. Is how it 50, much am I making? 55, 60. Oh, but yeah. see, but you never, you never said <laughs> what your position is because the bottom line is how will I be compensated how will you show me that you appreciate me or that you appreciate me being here it's not about uh, do you care more about the job title or the pay I'm asking no I'm I'm asking I feel like it all is hand in hand it's always the money fuck the job title no but it's hand in hand though because the job title typically with whatever status that is 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 what give you that pay niggas ain't about to give you the 70k for the admin but they might give motherfucker 70k to the the motherfucking Something that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> but I've also I've also seen situations where people will get more uh, responsibilities in a different job title, but not more pay. Ooh, let's oh yeah, keep, go. let's keep going with the job analogy. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it goes it goes both ways. That's why I said it has to be both. I mm-hmm. feel like it has to be both because somebody can show you all yeah. the love and affection that you need, and y'all still not exclusive. So until that's you true. discuss it, I feel like until you've had a conversation that's explicitly saying mm-hmm. we are exclusive, mm-hmm. don't make the assumption that you're exclusive because you can't just assume well he's been doing this and doing that's that. That's true. He might just be I a nice it. nigga. He might fuck with you tough and want to do these things for you, I mean, but that doesn't true. make you his girlfriend so i feel like you need to still pose that question or put that concept out there like hey but let's let, be exclusive or how do you feel about being exclusive what are we doing i would say that yeah but how about if you're a janitor but you're a janitor in the white house nigga if you don't get to cut his off, what? That's fucking my golf, dog. <laughs> nigga no no you know you you just a high paid toilet cleaner yeah because i gotta have a cl- uh fucking i, I feel like i've never that's it. i've never i never signed you never signed for no job without knowing what your job title is yeah. you don't just show up for work like yeah i'm here to work what you do um they say come in here like it's- right, so this is what i'm saying okay look y'all niggas been showing y'all all this shit mm-hmm, showing all this mm-hmm, shit okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and y'all y'all eight months in all right are you just assuming that you mm-hmm. guys are together, or do you need clarity? Nope. So w- take out the he he invested in you. Clarity. He, he, he good in bed. All, all that shit. Okay. I need clarity. You need clarity. I would prefer there to be exclusive. So any deal that you make, if you're making an exclusivity deal, that comes with certain terms, and I think that that should be discussed if that's what you want. If that's what mm-hmm. you want, then yeah, yeah, you should have that exclusivity. Just like any other deal or contract mm-hmm. or whatever the case is, there should be a conversation. But I feel there. like even if it's not what you want, you should have a discussion because mm-hmm. you might find out that it's what they want and what they thought they had. Mm-hmm. Well, and if you don't want it, you, it needs to be having a conversation. I would I, say this. My ex-boyfriend, we were dating for like three and a half months before we made our relationship official. Mm-hmm. In his mind, I was already his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? We made our our relationship official because he was like, he told me he loved me over the phone. And I was like, wait, what? And he was like, yeah, and hung up the phone. So when he came to my house that night, I'm like, okay, we should probably have a conversation. Like, what are we doing? And he was like, well, he he was under the impression that we were already in an exclusive relationship. Mm -hmm. But the conversation was never had. So I wasn't under that impression. I was dating this bitch named Destiny from Columbia. (sighs) Fire. Okay. I had to say her name because um, I don't usually say names. Yeah, right? that's I was how fire. I she know. Is. Hey, fire. <laughs> that's probably a decoy name. I, I was like. dating her, right? Mm-hmm. And then like yada yada yada, we was having a conversation. I don't know. We down in Georgetown. We eating at Chadwick's. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, um, yeah, man, I, I really see us, you know, going on it, you know, somewhere, you mm-hmm. know, you know, I haven't been seeing nobody else. She's like, oh, you haven't been dating other people? I was like, no, but I have. But I do. She's like, <laughs> is that what you want? Like, you know, us not today. I said. 
Are you dating other people? She's like, yeah, I went on a date yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. But she was, but the thing mm -hmm. is, she was willing to just date me, but she, we never talked about it. So right. she was she's like, still doing right. her. She was thinking that I was still doing me, but I, so in my mind, if I start liking you, I'm going to start weeding off chicks. Yeah, like, because it happens naturally. I think, like, guys have this big thing. Guys want companionship. I know mm -hmm. they be out here, like, acting like they king. Yeah, they want like, king. They when they find a woman other, that a they like, when they find <laughs> a woman they like, pressure is applied. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you're willing, like, all oh, these little dusty ass jokes. I mean, the, the reason they fall by the wayside because you didn't like them in the first place. It's just like they were there. And they start canceling each other out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you got something, you got your, you know, you got tunnel vision. You're like, and I had tunnel vision for shorty. So I'm thinking, like, yeah, she's like, I mean, no, we can not yeah. date other people, but. I was well, she was being smart because until a man says that or shows that he is ready for that or whatever, you have to keep your options open. I mean, you shouldn't shut everybody out because you don't know if they're shutting people out unless well. you have that conversation, unless you're doing it for yourself. Because I find myself <coughs> now, I've been just... You, yeah, you, I don't you, always have, you always have to do it for yourself because if you... Yeah. I tell women this all the time, just because a nigga is dating other people. Now, I always tell all my women friends, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But yeah. if that's not your thing, some people cannot they date can, multiple yeah. people. So if it's not, if that's Me. not your lane, don't drive in it. See, I can date multiple people. I just can't fuck multiple people. I'll go, mm -hmm. on, I can go on a date, a frivolous date. See, I don't I have, have do the attention span. Yeah, I don't I have, have the do attention that. span to date multiple people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I might be talking to a handful of dudes and it's like, once I get the tunnel vision on one, the mm -hmm. rest of them kind of just stop getting attention from me because it's like, I don't have the attention span to ask all y'all, all five of y'all mm -hmm. motherfuckers how y'all day was. I don't care. So See, I that's stop, the thing with men. I stop caring yeah, about bitches. that shit. So for me, Everyone just kind of, but see, the, this is the thing, though. I don't have a problem putting all my eggs in one basket, and I, I don't do it for yeah. no nigga thinking you doing the same. I do it just because that's just how I feel exactly. and that's how I move, but I've never had a problem recovering my eggs. No. So, for me, I got the hen house. Nigga, so, fuck these eggs. Ooh. I can get more. I saw the segue. You started here. That you, you, I saw it. I've been, I've, <laughs> I, I used to be like that. I used to be like that, but now I've learned because you, for me, for me and how I am, if I'm putting all my eggs in his basket, but he got a bunch of eggs in his basket, yeah. I'm going to feel some type of way, and it's going to hurt my feelings. So why I just keep my options open until that exclusivity deal is made. Because, and it's, like I said, I can't double clutch. Like, I, we talked about double clutching on the show several times. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should fuck. Fo I, I shouldn't fuck multiple people. But I can date. I can date. If it's seven days in a week, I can date seven different niggas in those seven days. And dating men is different from dating women. You don't have to keep up with them as thoroughly as they have to keep up oh, with yeah. us. So I could talk to a nigga once or twice a week yeah, and, you, main, and that, that relationship is or whatever is maintained. And that's cool. That's why I'm happy. I love that I'm straight because men are not that. You, they don't require that much. <laughs> you dating multiple women? It's I don't. I don't understand how y'all do that. So... <laughs> Guys, just imagine. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bitches talk too much yeah. for you to actually enjoy dating multiple women. <laughs> Maybe you can fuck multiple women, yeah. but dating, no. I don't no. see how y'all do, do it. it. No, because you, ha you have to keep like, up with them. Yeah. You have to. They, they, they're all on Mercury Gatorade at the same time. And then, like, you, you got to ask that question how you, they went six times. That's yeah. your day right there. And then you got to take hours. them all out to dinner. You got to fucking but pay for all see, of these fucking dates. That's nine hours for right me, there. Yeah. I tend to meet niggas who actually like want that type of engagement from me. So it's just like I don't have the energy to keep talking to y'all people. It's just like once once somebody going to outshine the pack. That's just mm -hmm. usually how that works. Mm -hmm. You meet five niggas. Five niggas might be texting me. One of them is going to outshine the pack because he just yep. going to be doing everything. Mm -hmm. He'll be everything. talking that talk. He's going to be walking that walk. Then it's like you text me and I'm like... I don't feel like talking to you. Yeah. And it's just like, you didn't do anything wrong. But yeah. I just don't have the attention to give to you because you he's outshining. Your light is dim as fuck right now. So yeah. it's like, I can't. Mm. But I, I've never had a problem. I, I I could put niggas on. I could put them four other four niggas on ice and talk to this nigga for a year and a half. Mm. And we break up, don't work out, whatever. And I could pick it right back up with one of them, niggas, one of them ice cubes. Like yeah. it was nothing. Put yeah. you right back in the glass. But, and, and niggas be with the shits. So for yeah, me, I haven't paid the price so I haven't took an L from cutting yeah. off my hoes. Yeah. So these motherfuckers like to get re 
fucking stitch back together. So. Yeah, I know. We, yeah, I get that. I understand where you're coming from. My journey is a little different. My feelings get hurt. <laughs> I, I, I literally, I be, I literally, I like hard and love hard. So that's I have to guard that shit. I be like, what? Oh. But yeah, I gotta guard that shit. It's, See now, it's, you it's keep... a gift and a curse because you're supposed. There's only one way to love, and that's hard. Mm-hmm. You can't. I know. Love, you know what I'm saying? See, it only hurts me if I'm blindsided. If you mm-hmm. keep it a bane and we start talking and you tell me that you be doing you and it's like, okay, cool, I made a conscious choice. All right, that's what's up. You know, mm-hmm. whatever. But if you make the, if you give me the, you paint the image that it's just us that you're not talking mm-hmm. to nobody else, I'm going to take that for what it is. So if I right. find out otherwise, then it's going to hurt my feelings. But if you keep it a stuck, it's like, all right, I know how I carry but, with you. But cool. It's a, it's a balance because you also don't want to like go too hard, be like, oh yeah, I'm dating you, but yeah, I got like ten other bitches. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not asking for a specific, <laughs> yeah. but if you tell me that you're dating, mm-hmm. that's all you have to say. I'm dating. Yeah. Don't don't make it seem like it's yeah, just yeah. me and you. I ain't fucking with nobody right. else. If you tell me, I mean, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I really fuck with you, or whatever. But I am dating. Okay, cool. Yeah. I know how to move with that. Don't paint the picture anything other than what right. it is, and then I won't get my feelings hurt. Oh, yeah. But if you, like, if you yeah. fake it, when then I'm gonna be like, I ain't fucking with nobody else. It's just you. You don't even want to talk like shit. Yeah, like don't that. go out your way. To, so my thing is, one my one of my rules just in life, I never ask about other women. I never ask about never bitches. Ask about women I else. never. I go because if you talking to another bitch and you tell you go out of your way to tell me that you're only talking to me or you're only dealing with me, and I find out you're talking to another bitch, it's not even a fact that you're talking to another bitch. It's the de- it's the lie and the deception. Right. Because if you allow you when you don't have to, talk. you allow when you need to. Right. So, you it's know. not about the bitch. Fuck the bitches. I feel like I. You know what I'm saying? I I just don't I don't <laughs> care because I feel like with men, y'all women are not competing against each other. They're competing against themselves. I guess when it comes mm-hmm. to y'all. So it's like I don't fuck fuck them, but don't tell me one thing and do another because that's just deceptive. And, and, and I don't least, fuck with that. And at least you won't be caught off guard because say if you just happen to go into the restaurant and you see him with a girl, you be like, mm-hmm. all right, he told me. Because yeah. I always say it's different. Or he didn't say nothing. Yeah, just don't it, say nothing. <laughs> when you know someone is dating someone, like you don't know, but you just assume it. It's different when it's confirmed. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I I think every I would. When any situation I go into, you know, in talking to someone or dating someone, I assume that other bitches are present as fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like I, I talk to, you know juiceless. what I'm saying? Huh? It's just useless. I just yeah. hate I just hate a nigga lying when you don't have to. If you lie when you don't mm-hmm. have to lie, like you don't have to lie to me because we're not at that level. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so if you lied to me now. Mm-hmm. I mean, what the fuck? You you would definitely deny, bitch, after we make it official. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, I ain't even about to go through all this. Stuff. I, Fellas, let me let y'all know. Women always have a minimum of six niggas. That's not true, but okay. A minimum. That's not true. But okay. But my thing is, niggas. it depend, It just depends on what, what you feel like doing. Like, for me, I'm going through this niggas? phase where I don't feel like, I don't, I'm going through this phase where, like, niggas is just dropping off. Like, I'm dropping them off. Like, I just don't care. I'm just like... I ain't gonna lie. I'm holding back from what for some from something. What mm-hmm. I'm saying, but I just I'm just going through this phase. Where I just I don't want to talk to these niggas. Like I don't know. Mm-hmm. But so I, there's no six niggas is what I'm saying. So that's not that's not always true. It, but I get what you're saying. So it's, I can't oh, even okay. find six niggas I like so, simultaneously. So I'm not saying I can get six <laughs> six niggas on my line right now if that's, I wanted. To. No, I that's can what get I'm saying. six that's niggas what, on my that's, line. That's, a guy can't you. do that. See, a but guy can't consistently too, not just like for the day. No, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay. A guy, I don't care who you are, unless if you're Drake or Trey Songs, you could be an attractive guy. You just can't get six women on your line at the drop of a hat. Y'all can get six niggas like hey, y'all. Yes, hey, I just want to let y'all know who wants to take me out. Do, but do, do, see, the y'all problem with that crazy. is I can. Now get I said six, equality. Not, no, I'm saying right. I can get six niggas on my line like that, but I'm only gonna like maybe one or two of them. So that's it's like, true. Shit, you might the like other, zero. The other, right, oh, right, which means that anywhere from four to six don't fucking count because if that's I don't true. if I don't like you, I don't give a fuck if you on my line, boy. Get your yeah. ass out of here. But yeah, I don't have the attention span. I just I have a very short attention yeah. span when it comes to niggas. Like yeah. Yeah, um, that that was a very interesting convo. I think that, uh, but going to the back to the tweet that he put, uh, shout out to Reason from CDE. Uh, I, as far as like asking or assuming by action, I, I think <coughs> the the moral of the story is that we prefer both. Yeah. But for me, if I had to choose one, if I had to just choose, if I could only have one, I would take the action over the over the telling me like, look, we of whatever. course who. I mean, yeah, but I just feel like I don't if feel you like had I would to pick ever one, be in an environment where I have to select one or the well, other. No, like, well, no, we just picking a it's side like, at yeah, this you point. Gotta it's tell, a podcast. Ask me if I'm your girlfriend, but don't act like I'm your girl. No, 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 like, fuck you, sir. Yeah, I mean, I said? just for the sake of the, of the podcast, you know what I'm saying? We had to pick a side. But anyway, 
Um, then be the so the, before we because yeah we we about to end the show uh, we ain't even this is a old, this is like old format but right. anyway um, Meek Mill tweeted and that got everybody a little riled up he was like I can never understand a broke woman that wants a Chanel bag as a gift tell him or her you'd rather take the fifty five hundred vice versa for guys expensive clothes with no bankroll what did y'all think about that I get it I get it I get it I mm-hmm. mean don't get me wrong. Because Chanel holds its value. You know what I'm saying? So you got a Chanel, you'll never be broke. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You holding on to that Chanel. But if you're broke now, you don't need the Chanel. It's like, I have money now, but if I could always cash out the Chanel later if I fall on hard times. But if you came in on hard times, baby, take the money. So so what I I agree with the sentiment that he was saying, you know, but when are niggas niggas like, look, you want this bag or you want the 5500 Like, niggas is not doing that. They're, like, going to get the bag or the shoe or whatever. Well, if a nigga, like, yeah, and I copy you this bag, babe. Uh, can I just have the money? I want to go to college. Like- men, do, do men tell you, I'm about to go buy you this so you can intercept it with the with just give me the money? Yeah, like, men niggas is not doing that. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, then you're, not gonna, case, you're not going to say, take this back and give me the money? Like, nah, in that case, you sell it. Yeah, because then I'm gonna like, no, no so, bitch, you got to sell it behind his back and say it got stolen. <laughs> But the point is, I think just the logic right, behind it was don't show. be. I feel like the logic behind it is don't be the yeah. bitch out here with the Chanel with nothing in it. Like, absolutely, man, absolutely, you're hustling I agree. Absolutely, I agree with that. You know, you don't have no hustle about yourself, mm-hmm. and then you you buy these designer items. And uh, by the way, speaking of designer items in these white ass companies, I'm back on Starbucks. I'm sorry. I just had to let y'all know that. I oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Let me explain. Let me explain. There's nothing so, to explain. Yes, yes. Tariq Nashi. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell y'all. Tariq Nashi <laughs> just did a breakdown of all of these companies. Chanel, Hugo Boss, Louis Vuitton, and just, just to name a few. That so what many. Louis and them do. They like used to like make uniforms or goods for like the Nazis and shit yeah, like that. Like that. all of these companies are corrupt as fuck. So it's like, what the fuck? Like, we weren't even over there. That's not still. even our fight. So th- this is the thing. This is how I feel about that. And we talked about this. You can't protest everything. But yeah. You can't protest some stuff. Yeah. I, I don't even know Man. how strongly I feel about that anymore. Y'all ain't finna take Louis from me because that's my shit. So. Listen. I'm. I. I just can't do. I. I just. I don't feel as no. strongly as I once did about it, these. These nah, companies. Fuck that. You the chase case, me through you your you house. You might as well not protest nothing. Then. You chase me that's through your house over Starbucks. That I did. Your... That was like what? That was last year, my baby. Yeah, she you chased, was on her you fucking. You can change. She yeah. chased the shit out of me. Yeah. I, I, just, I had to hop out my slides and run downstairs. I almost died. I don't <laughs> feel as strongly as I once did about protesting these companies, especially because until <laughs> black people get. An all a, a, a quality alternative. We do have them. Don't get me wrong. We do have quality alternatives to certain things, but we don't have a quality alternative. That's why we need reparations because that will give us that will give us the the, mm-hmm. the resources that we need to have yeah. to be competitive yeah. in right. this market. But right now, we're not competitive enough in the market to replace because we should be like these other groups, like the Jews or whatever. They get together, be like, look, we got the. Life insurance company, we got the car dealerships, we got these, we got that. Like, they just got everything gotcha. lined up so that if they, okay, don't worry, we're going to support our own anyway. They don't even have to boycott shit because they sure. already supporting their own. So, honestly, I just, I don't feel as strongly about boycotting these companies Girl, as you I you missed the shit out that motherfucking caramel frappuccino. You ain't got to tell, you ain't got to lie. That ain't it. I have my own coffee maker and everything, but. Do it make frappuccinos, though? Nah. <laughs> exactly, girl. You know you went in that joint. I'm gonna get no fucking mocha, fucking frappuccino. I would get that. Hello. So I just literally get with soy milk. I'm <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry. I'm gonna just be. I'm gonna keep it a stack with y'all. I'm gonna always keep it a buck with y'all. I never stop drinking Starbucks. I ain't even gonna hold you. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to beef with the corporation because that one location wowed man, out. It was that one manager that was tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, you're not going to hold it shit. against me for all the shit that other black people be doing. Look, I'm me. <laughs> Just because that bitch robbed you two weeks ago don't mean I'm about to rob you. Like, I, I, treat me as an individual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I show for today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let us know what you think about um, everything that we've said down in the comments. Uh, make sure you're subscribing if you're listening to this on SoundCloud or Apple Podcast. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Just do that real quick because we need to see y'all who's in the building when we be doing our shit. For and sure we got know. some, we got some really, uh, we got some stuff coming up for y'all. That's some new content that y'all haven't seen. And when we do our Patreon, make sure y'all uh, sign up for that. So we will see you next time on No Disclaimers Podcast, baby. Yeah.